the shirt. Get your shit together. What's up, guys? I'm Alex. I'm Jason. We're the Table Monkeys. This is Table Talks episode 8 already. God damn. Damn. And uh, this is our second pulling session in the backyard of the week. Um, so we're. Because this up. guy, Mike. Wanted to pull, and uh, we never say no in a pulling session. Yeah, pretty much. He can't make it on Sundays when we normally pull with the other guys, so he asked if we could pull on Wednesdays, and uh, I'm uh, notably beat up at this point. Um, and uh, so at that point, when I feel tired, and I'm going with somebody who's, I mean, he's pretty strong. He's a rugby player. He's like he's got a good base of strength, and uh, I guess since quarantine, he's been nothing but working that hand. So <laughs> yeah, hand, his, hand was uh, his rugby season's over, so yeah. he's been like. All right. <laughs> yeah, he's going to become an arm wrestler now, so he's been working that hand a lot, and his hand was strong. But uh, in those situations, I, I try not to, uh, you know, I don't fight past a certain percentage. Um, I, I work technique and try to find weaknesses and spaces and, and maneuver, but um, if uh, if he's, when, when you see him pinning me or opening me up, it's, uh, it's more me letting go and not wanting to fight past um, than... Uh, than actually being like ripped open, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's like a it's a good like way to practice being smart on the table because you know you can't you can't even put that much pressure if you want to because yeah. it just starts to hurt. Yeah, yeah. There's a point where uh, like if I really pulled hard, obviously I, I could have pulled with more force, but uh, it was more about um, uh, the pain. Like there's no point to pull through all that pain right now yeah. because of the volume. And we know that at this point. Like the day before this, I think is when we sealed up the super matches and stuff. And yeah, so this, so <laughs> right, this day was uh, was last Wednesday. Ten yeah. days from my super match coming this Sunday, which will be tomorrow because this video is going up on Saturday. Yeah, right? exactly. This this should be coming out on Saturday unless we fucked up big. <laughs> but uh, you, this is Saturday, then that means that uh, tomorrow we got our first uh, first event for the BAL as yeah, we're gonna call BAL it. BAL one hundred and one. BAL one hundred and one for the backyard. Arm wrestling league uh, in uh, in this little back deck. We are fucking here. sick of no tournaments. <laughs> yeah, we're dying right now. We yeah. need to arm wrestle, so yeah. we had to set up this little uh, backyard arm wrestling league. Yeah, we need a proper ready go. We need some real <laughs> real ready go. So be a real ref and uh, real ready goes best of five. Uh, we've got uh, Jordan is going to take on Miguel. Yep. So he's, Jordan's in this video. Uh, yeah. He's the one with the curly hair. He, he's, he's been in our videos a bunch of times. Yeah. And Miguel has been in one of our videos. Yeah. He's been in two now. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay, he's two. been in two now. So, um, so yeah. So those two guys are going to go at it. Uh, I, I guess uh, Miguel is. I mean, he's strong in practice. So I, I would still call him the underdog just based on experience and uh, and age and everything. Yep. Um, <coughs> I would say, yeah, Miguel right. is the is the weaker of the two, but he's more explosive, and you know he may have more hunger. I don't know if he's the weaker. I mean, it depends on the angle. Like he's got a he's got a wicked press when he when he gets it in the, on the right angle, and he's got a really sweet uh, drag off the start. So I guess you're right. Overall strength, yeah, Jordan's got him beat by definitely a bit. on the hand. Yeah, the, the hand yeah. as well. It's a hand sport, and that's what I was going to say. The hand yeah. is where he's where he's lacking a bit, and that's I think, why he goes for the press so often. Yeah, right? exactly. Well, because he, he he especially in the strap feels like he doesn't need his hand for it, right? But as we've talked about, you kind of you kind of do. So. Yeah, you always do. Right. <coughs> so that's um, going to be a, a super interesting match to watch. Yeah, and they're just going to pull on the right hand. They're going to pull on the right, and I don't know if they're going to do five or if they're just going to do three. No, this, they're going to do five. Be, yeah, yeah, best yeah, of okay. five. So they're all going to be best of five then. Mm -hmm. So, and then we've got uh, uh, Lewis. We're going to call him Lewis, the AKA Luke uh, <laughs> Cocolaris. Um, Lewis is going to take on uh, Burhan. Yeah. Um, which, uh, if you ever saw the match that Devin hosted at his place between Burhan and Matt Smith. The rookie vs. pro match. It was like the first one of those. That was November 2019. Yeah, that was last November. Yeah, yeah 2019, exactly. So, um, apparently, Burhan's been working, working out a lot, gaining some weight, and uh, and getting a lot stronger. So, that should be a really good match because Lewis has definitely got a serious side pressure. I, know, I have some inside information that suggests that someone, like that Derek Askey, may be able to beat Burhan. Oh, really? Yeah. That's a, well, that's a serious call out right off the. Right off the bat, but um, uh, but who knows? That was just yeah. practice. So. That was yeah, and and Lewis Lewis said the otherwise. So maybe Lewis was setting up an easy match for himself. <laughs> Lewis loves to play the humble guy. Yeah, he does. <laughs> yeah, he's the guy that never talks shit. So. Exactly. Um, but uh, but he's got a serious side pressure hit. So um, whatever whatever Burhan's bringing to the table, he better be able to deal with some 
some proper side pressure because uh, Lewis has got that. He's got a strong. strong I mean, yeah, hand everybody hand. like you go into a match with Lewis and you know what he's gonna do. Yeah, but just like, can you get out of it? Can yeah, there's not, not a lot of guessing games. I don't know if they've agreed to go right to the strap. So if Lewis has got a slip, that would be uh, Burhan's biggest advantage. Would be trying to avoid the slip and and uh, you know whatever it is, exploding hand technique or, or getting trapped in a, in a weird cup or something. Yeah, because because uh, yeah, Lewis in the strap is, is strong. That's going to be a yeah. super interesting match. Yeah. I'd say, yeah, the favorite, uh, yeah. I think both of us, is probably Lewis at this moment, but we also That's have... That's what we don't really know. I've, yeah, I've, yeah, literally, I don't think I've ever gripped up with him. Maybe once at, at Devin's at that uh, event, like, yeah. he pulled, but it was at the end, so we were both, like, fucking wet noodles at that point. Like, there was nothing yeah. from either of us. So, um, so yeah, I have no idea what to expect from Burhan. I know I have a good idea of what to expect from Lewis, and... Uh, if, if Burhan stops him and, and gets a win, uh, then I mean, that's awesome. Like, that's pretty impressive. That's yeah. definitely an improvement from what, what Matt Smith did to him. Yeah. Um, and then it's you and Derek right and left. Yeah, the main, the main event. The main event. <laughs> uh, and uh, hopefully there was a poster somewhere in this uh, in this video at some point, or you've seen one on on uh, social media. So yeah, you got a little bit of the idea of the stats. They match up very very evenly. Yeah. Um. So and pull very differently though. You know. So um, he loves to go inside. I mean, this far, that's just, that's what it seems like. Yeah. You know. So I mean, he's got a strong cut and he's got a wicked a wicked hook when he lays it in. And he's quick off the start. He's, he knows how to do it off the start yeah. quick. Yeah, he, he has uh, more experience than me, right? Like how? I think he's two years. Yeah, he's two yeah, years in. Yeah, okay. uh, we don't know at this point, but it should be on the poster. So, yeah. <laughs> um, the exact experience difference. Uh, but yeah, aside from that, um, but I mean, you have more strength experience. I think. Like, I don't think he's ever powerlifted to the extent that you have. You know, so even though you're not holding all that strength now, you've got like the base of it there. You know, like I would give you the. The, the overall strength advantage, mm -hmm. but I might give him at least from the last time we pulled some of the specific arm wrestling strength, yeah, uh, advantage. Um, but but then again, I was never fresh when yeah. I pulled with him, yeah, yeah. No, I'm not, uh, that's the thing. I mean, it was know. always like I had like a full week of training before you know, yeah. and maybe a day of rest yeah. before I'm going to pull with him. I mean, I, I'm sure he would say almost the same, but he probably except, would, for, yeah, except yeah. for maybe that one that first time here, um. He was feeling pretty, pretty fresh that day, and they, they said they were fresh. But either way, that's—I mean—that's it. Does come down to that? How, how well you, uh, how well you get yourself ready? You know, how well you peak and everything. So, I mean, how much do you want to say what you've been doing? You want to go through it, or you want to wait till it's over and we talk about it? No, okay, we can talk about it now. Yeah. I mean, it was kind of like um, the little last minute. I would, I would love to have had more time to prepare for for an event like this, but you know. I wanted to pull, so it doesn't. It's okay. Like, yeah, I don't we basically think... had two weeks yeah. uh, to make a plan and execute for the super match. Yeah, which I think for how you, where you're at, and your experience level, and, and it being just a one super match with him one arm, that is a. Or no, it's both arms. Yeah. Sorry, but uh, but either way, just a super match with one guy, uh, which is a lot to prepare for. But um, he's not way out of your league or anything. It's not like you're stretching super. You guys are, are a good even match. It should be a wicked. A wicked fight between the two of you. Yeah. Um, so with that being said, like the two weeks is a good enough of a peak uh, for something like that. But yeah. Like, well, I was lucky that I was consistently pulling, consistently lifting, yeah. uh, doing a lot of volume. Uh, I mean, all of quarantine. So all I decided to do was just uh, ramp up the intensity a little bit in that final week, and we did some testing on. Uh, Friday and then Monday. Friday and Monday, so obviously that was very, uh, very intense, and we did we barely any volume. And then uh, this week, uh, leading up to the competition, is mostly just technique work, yeah, and some light bands, some light bands, yeah. a lot of multi spinner work, and yeah, a lot of rest. Yeah, so nothing too crazy, yeah, except for that twenty mile run. <laughs> oh yeah, about that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I'm also. <laughs> Peaking for a marathon, yeah. uh, the same time as peaking for this. Yeah, they're not exactly the same time, but I think that's actually, if you want to talk about just the idea behind peaking and everything, that's definitely the interesting part of what you've had to kind of figure out for mm -hmm. this one, is how to do those two at the same time without affecting either too well. You know? Yeah, yeah, because uh, originally I had planned to do uh, a 20 mile run on Saturday the day before competing. 
And you know, I was just thinking in my head, okay, I mean, I guess I just have to do it. That's just the way it is. That's what I had planned out. Yeah. And then I thought to myself, wait, <laughs> I can plans can change. Plans can change. Yeah. Like, plans are meant to change. Yeah, then yeah. the idea of this whole thing is that things are auto regulatable. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't know if that's a word, but <laughs> it um, works. The idea is, yeah, you can definitely uh, you can maneuver things around and 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 adapt to what life throws at you exactly you new know? situations new circumstances yeah. a super match yeah. so yeah so, I'm so gonna, instead of instead of altering what you were going to do with arm wrestling you just altered what you were doing with your running yeah I mean at this in this week arm wrestling takes the priority right so right. I need to be more prepared for that I mean I need to be for this 20 mile run yeah because the marathon is, is a few, still a few weeks away and and the 20 mile run uh, like the execution of the 20 mile run is more is has is more much more forgiving than the execution of the super match. Like if you don't perform at 100, percent you don't win. Yeah. If you you can adjust, you can't like take the super match and be like, let's do half of it now and half of it later. <laughs> like the way you're gonna do your run, you said you were gonna split it up and take like like little breaks uh, in between the whole 20 miles. Yeah. Right. So it's like and like I can always just slow down a little too if it's, yeah, if it's exactly, harder. You know? yeah, yeah. I can't slow down the super match. Yeah. Exactly. So that was, I think that was a great idea. Yeah, you just move it to Thursday, right? Yeah, moving it to Thursday, so I'll have three days to recover, eat, and just fucking prepare myself and yeah. visualize. Yeah. Because I'm coming for you, Derek. <laughs> I'm so fucking ready. Yeah, it's gonna be, it's gonna be good. I, I, we're all excited for for proper ready goes. Yeah. And I've got a something that my biggest test, honestly, I think my biggest test is. Right, we haven't even talked about you yet. Yeah. Well, just let me finish this point. Yeah. Is that I think my biggest test is making it through <laughs> this day without fucking pulling. Yeah. Because I've got a match coming up on the fourth, which is the following weekend. And we all know if you know anything about pulling, especially with the amount of pulling and volume that we've been doing, I haven't, I haven't had a full week, more than a week off, uh, si- since uh, before pulling for veterans. Wow. Yeah. Because it's before, February. Yeah. Because yeah. after that, I was like in the gym, hardcore, getting ready for Ottawa Open, mm-hmm. and then gyms closed, or then like quarantine, no more tournaments. So then I was like, "Fuck it, we're gonna go gym hardcore." <laughs> and then all of a sudden, gyms closed, and then we were like, "Fuck it, we we're gonna make a gym." So we did our <laughs> shit here and just been doing it ever since. Yeah. So I haven't stopped, and I've been going, you know, more more than on the table, more than twice a, or more than once a week. Like I go basically twice a week, every other week. And, and our sessions are stupid long. Yeah, the ones that we do are stupid long on Sundays. And then the ones that I do uh, every other Wednesday are the secret pulling session that we're not going to talk anymore about. But um, that uh, is that's usually when I go like stupid hard. Yeah. And um, so so if I don't rest properly before my match on the fourth, yeah, I'm gonna be too sore for my match on the fourth. That the damage I do on the fourth, I'm still gonna feel by the time I get up to Curtis on the 18th. Is yeah. what I think. So that's why pulling on, if I pull with anybody on Sunday, it's not just, it's not necessarily fucking up my match with Tiny as much as it's more going to fuck up my match with Curtis, I think. You think? Hmm. Yeah. Because. You think you have to put more effort into because I'll, beating Tiny? Yeah, because because if I, because I'll, I'll be smarter, if I pull at all, I'll be smart enough not to pull too much. Mm-hmm. But then, so I'll feel kind of good for Tiny, but going through a super match is going to beat my arm up. Yeah. And because it hasn't had, because of that little beating up that it took on the Sunday, uh, it, you know what I mean? Like so what we're going to do is we're going to put oven mitts on your hands and yeah. tape it. <laughs> yeah. Tape it around yeah. so you can't arm wrestle you if you want it to. Yeah. yeah. Then, then everybody's going to be like, oh, you can still go on a hook. Just let's just hook wrists. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no. But yeah, so um, definitely that's the biggest discipline part of, of peaking. And you get worried. You get nervous at the end uh, when it's coming down to it because you're, you're reducing the work. You're becoming more specific with the things that you're doing you're not doing stuff that you've been doing for months and months and months yeah and you start to go no but that's gonna it's gonna be i'm gonna lose it it's yeah. all gonna go away all this rest yeah exactly sense. you know yeah. um but it won't it won't if you do it right and and you you aren't injured the super compensation that you get from it um can be pretty ridiculous i know we both felt that at meets mm-hmm. uh, you know powerlifting meets specifically and i know for one tournament in particular where i, f- I felt like i got the peak so perfect and that first pull, like it was that when I beat Tony and Andrew Scott, like on the arm fight one on one. So it was the very first like semi pro thing. And when I had to go against Tony, I was like, "What the hell? Like this is I, I have no idea how this is going to go." And 
when I stopped him, I just felt like it was the first time going full on hard in like two weeks and doing it everything like exactly how I thought would be perfect based on powerlifting, which basically how we're doing it now, a little bit different. And I just, I felt like so much stronger than I'd felt through all the arm wrestling that I'd done up to that point, you know? Like yeah. I just felt like a totally different person. And that's a great feeling. You yeah. Know? And you feel it on the platform too. You get underweight that is way more than you lifted before and you're just like, oh, like I'm going to own this shit. Exactly. That's so, part of it. It's like being so hungry to get on that platform or to get on the table. Yeah. yeah. Like I remember like leading up to meets being so fucking excited yeah. to get on that platform and yeah. lift. Yeah. Uh, because the past week or two weeks has been very light and yeah. not yeah. exciting at all. Yeah, exactly. You're just and dying. And holding yourself back. Yeah. Like, like feeling like a cage animal, like feeling like a dog on a leash and you're like, <laughs> yeah. like just ready to get out. I'm starting to feel that now. I know. I know you feel like like it's perfect right? yeah and then th this guy wanted to pull at my secret session on wednesday this wednesday just to work some technique and be sure that he was ready i had to talk him out of that stupid shit <laughs> which was a good idea right because you're gonna be so fucking hungry to pull yeah like that ready go is gonna be like you're gonna be so anxious for it mm -hmm. and uh that anxiety can be a good thing if you can focus it and control it and not let it take advantage of you. I was uh, thinking about that can because be a good thing. it's 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 definitely a little there's anxiety and there's nervousness, but I know what is I know what to prepare for. It's not like a tournament where I'm like um, I have no idea who I'm pulling. I'm I'm nervous and anxious, but I also don't know what to expect. At least I know what to expect now. So yeah. I can, I'm immensely prepared for it. Yeah, the visualization the, the that you have. Uh, is different, right? Like yeah. For a tournament, you're visual. You're not never visualizing the person across from you. Like at least for me, in a tournament, I just start visualizing the motion that I want to go through, like the feeling that I want to feel when I when I make my hit or when I do deliver yeah. my first like initial move. Um, but when you're going against a super match with somebody, at least for you, especially being like you guys have pulled together relatively close, like it's not like he's going to be a totally different person. Yeah. Um, I've never pulled to, uh, Jeff at all, and there's only a few videos I've been able to find of him, and Curtis I haven't ever pulled, and the videos are from a year ago, and apparently he's a totally different puller now, so yeah. I'm not going to try to rely on that at all. I'm, I'm more going into tournament style where I'm just focusing on what I'm going to do, yeah. but you've got the ability to, to, to have a, a pretty specific game plan yeah, uh, exactly. for, for him. Uh, which that could all totally get thrown me. to shit too. <laughs> if he, if he, that's what makes it so cool. It's such I know. a chess match. You never know, you know? what's going to happen. But you got to go in. If you don't go in, it's like I remember learning this in, in football. Like first practice was like, okay, we're going to start hitting now. If you go to make contact and you don't go 100%, you will get hurt. Yeah. The person who doesn't go 100% is the one who's going to get hurt. I remember and that's that what happens rugby. in this. Yeah. yeah. Is you've got to, you've got to just like, you've got to just commit, right? Test and, your frame. And that's what makes it so, yeah, test your frame. Mm -hmm. Crack. <laughs> it's like uh, it's that's what makes it so exciting. Uh, it's so fun. Anyway, we'll be live streaming it. Uh, yeah, on tomorrow the, on the Facebook channel. Uh, Facebook channel <laughs> <laughs> on our Facebook page. Yeah, so like our Table Monkeys Facebook page. We'll have it linked in the description. Yeah, and uh, we'll, we'll also we'll also be posting the the matches the, the following, following day. day. Yeah, uh, we'll we'll post them up all the matches. Yeah, and, uh, and we'll live stream all the matches. And uh, if you like the video, like the video. Leave uh, comments in the fe fe feedback in the comments. <laughs> yeah, That's do that. what you're supposed to do. And subscribe for new videos each week. Peace. Monkeys out. <laughs>